In our last video, we went over how to put the DS212 scope together. In this video, we'll go over the basic operation of the scope. We're ready to turn on the scope now, so let's flip the power switch to on. We'll be navigating through the scope's menu using the two wheels, the M wheel and the S wheel. You can scroll through different menu options by scrolling the M wheel, and enter a sub-menu of the item you're hovering over by pressing the M wheel. Then, you can change the values of the parameter you're hovering over by scrolling the S wheel. Press the M wheel again to exit the sub-menu. You can click the S wheel to cycle through the different pages of the menu. You'll find the oscilloscope page on page 1, the measurement page on page 2, and the options page on page 3. By pressing and holding the S wheel, you will be able to close the menu sidebar. If you press and hold the M wheel, it will bring up the save and load data menu, which we'll go over later. The last button you'll find is the run stop button, which works just like the run stop button you'll find on an oscilloscope in the lab. You can notice a few boxes at the top here. Starting from the left, the boxes show the voltage divisions of the two channels, time division, trigger mode, and sync mode. All of these are important parameters, but how do you change these? You can control this oscilloscope, like how you control the oscilloscope in the lab and knobs and buttons, by changing the parameters on page 1. Let's go over the options from the top. The first two tabs of the list are the channel options. By entering the channel submenu by pressing the M button, you'll be able to set the parameters for the respective channel. The top of the submenu is voltage, which is the voltage division. Hover over the option and scroll the S wheel to change it. Next up is post. Change this to move the signal vertically. Right below that is AC slash DC which lets you switch between AC and DC coupling and enable let's see turn off an unused channel. The probe option asks you whether you're using a 1x or a 10x probe. The probe that's shipped with the scope is a 1x probe, so keep this parameter at 1x. Next up is the math channel, which is displayed as CH underscore C. Hovering over the math option at the top will let you choose the operation to be performed. You can turn this channel off or on by changing the enable parameter. And you can move the resultant signal up and down by changing the post. Fourth tab on page 1 is time base. Hover over it and scroll the S wheel to change it, just like any other parameter. Next up is the trigger menu. The scope offers many sync options, but you'll likely only need the auto and the normal. By changing the trig mode parameter, you can tell the scope to trigger either on a rising edge or a falling edge. And you can change the force parameter to choose between channel A and B as the trigger source. Their shoulder represents the trigger level. And the enable parameter determines whether the horizontal line showing the trigger level is visible on the screen or not. The autofit parameter must be enabled before you can use the autofit function. Turn this parameter to on, and double click the M wheel to have the scope automatically trigger the signal. The sixth tab on page 1 is the cursor menu. Here, you'll be able to move the time cursors by varying the T1 post and T2 post parameters and the separation between the two cursors is shown in the orange box in the bottom right. You may choose to turn them off by changing the enable T parameter as well. The voltage cursors can be moved by changing the V1 post and V2 post variables, and their separation is shown in the yellow box in the bottom left. By changing the enable V parameter, 
You can select which channel the cursor is measuring, or choose to turn the voltage cursors off entirely. The last option on page 1 is the X window menu. In the submenu, you can move the waveform horizontally by altering the post parameter, change the acquisition memory depth with the depth parameter, or make the vertical orange dotted line marking the time equals zero point disappear with the enable parameter. If we move on to page 2 by clicking the S wheel, we can see five measurement slots. We can set each slot to measure what we want by hovering over it and scrolling the S wheel, or by clicking the M wheel to enter the submenu for that slot. In the submenu, we can pick which channel it's measuring, select what kind of measurement is to be displayed in that slot, or turn the slot off entirely. We can move to page 3, the options page, by clicking the S wheel again. At the top, you'll find the File Manage tab, which is where you'll be able to save the current data or parameters. Enter the submenu, and you'll be able to see the different file types the scope is able to save the measure data as. Move down to the file type you want, for example, a BMP file for an image of the waveform, or a CSV file for a table with the numerical values of the measured voltage at a given time, and click the S wheel. When the r w file message in the red shows up on the bottom right, the file has been saved. You can access these files by plugging the scope into a computer with the micro USB cable and using the scope like a regular thumb drive. The second tab on page 3 is the wave output option. In the submenu, you'll be able to choose the type, frequency, and duty cycle of the waveform to be output. You can choose between square waves, sine waves, the options waves, for the rest of the waveforms are a bit more limited, as their frequencies can only go up to 10 kHz. The frequency of the square wave ranges from 10 Hz to MHz, while its peak-to-peak -peak amplitude is fixed at 3 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. Its duty cycle can be set between 10% and 90%. The options for the rest of the waveforms are a bit more limited, as their frequencies can only go up to 10 kHz. Their peak-to-peak -peak amplitude is fixed at 2 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. Since the concept of duty cycle does not apply to these waveforms, it will not be accessible while you're outputting one of these waveforms. Below that is a system settings menu, where you can set your personal preferences for things like volume and screen brightness. I'd like to mention the screenshot shortcut before we wrap up. If you press and hold the run stop button and the S wheel together, you'll be able to save an image of the waveform currently being displayed. In this video, we took a look at the functions of the scopes buttons and looked at how to navigate through the menus. If you're already familiar with using an oscilloscope, this video may have been enough for you to get started with using the scope. If you're unsure, watch the next two videos for the function generator tutorial and a walkthrough of a quick example project.